Please rise for our national anthem and presentation of colors. Watched, were so gallant 
endlessly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof to the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled Ladies and gentlemen, the Provost of Virginia Commonwealth University, Dr. Gail Hackett. Good morning. Please be seated. Welcome to Virginia Commonwealth University's commencement ceremony. Today, we gather to celebrate the accomplishments of VCU's class of 2017. I'm Gail Hackett, Provost and Vice President for Academic Affairs. On behalf of President Michael Rao, the Board of Visitors, and our faculty and staff, it is a pleasure to welcome you to this morning's commencement. I am pleased to recognize our VCU Police Honor Guard, our soloist, Ellen Mort, and the VCU commencement brass conducted by Ross Walter. <laughs> Let me begin by introducing those who share the platform with me today. I'll ask the members of the platform party to rise as they are recognized and to remain standing. Please kindly hold your applause until the end of the introductions. Rector of the VCU Board of Visitors, Phoebe Hall, and the members of the Board of Visitors. Our academic vice presidents and deans, faculty senate president, Scott Street, and student government association, association president, Destine Maragni. On each side of the stage are our grand marshals, Catherine Ingracia and Ellen Byrne. Other members of the platform party will be recognized during the program. Will all members of the platform party please rise? And please join me in recognizing this wonderful group of people. Today, we're also joined by members of our outstanding and committed faculty. Would all faculty please stand so we may congratulate and thank you for the integral role you played in transforming the lives of our graduates. Thank you. I now welcome to the podium the president of Virginia Commonwealth University, Dr. Michael Rao, President Rao. Thank you, Provost Sackett. Good morning. It is a small group this morning. All of you decided to brave the weather, and I'm so glad that you're here. And it's going to be a warm group. We're going to have a good time this morning celebrating your commencement, your graduation. I am so pleased to join the Provost, the Board of Visitors, my faculty colleagues. We're all glad to be here so that we can congratulate you on your graduation from Virginia Commonwealth University. You know, it's interesting, I've gotten to know quite a few of you during your time here, and I know a lot of things about you. 
I know that your intelligence and your focus is going to solve what defies us. Your compassion and your kindness will span what divides us. Your education and your determination will shift what defines us. I know that when you work together, you do achieve the kinds of difficult things that no one else can achieve, but that everyone everywhere will benefit from. And why do I know this? I know this because I know you. And I've seen your unfailing commitment to VCU's mission of taking on the kinds of things that are just about impossible anyplace else. You know, across the nation this weekend, there will be about two million people who will get their college degrees. And I want you to remember that you are exceptional among these people because you're graduating from a university that for 180 years has made a huge difference in the world through innovations that we conceive, the cures that we discover, the concepts that we advance, and most notably, the people who we empower, which is to say, of course, you. You are exceptional among the two million graduates that will be out there in the nation because you're graduating from an exceptional university. So remember, part of what that means is that the world's really going to turn to you with the kind of hope and promise that they need to achieve the exceptional things that have got to be achieved. This will take your absolute best effort and your best purpose. It'll take an unprecedented commitment to building consensus at a time when it just seems like no one can agree on much of anything. So if you want to talk about what's doing what's difficult, this is it. As a steady leader in a shifting world, how do you inspire people to collaborate when they just don't want to even talk? How do you lead the kind of difficult conversations that can lead to real change? How do you get anything done when people are more interested in taking sides than they are in making strides? Too many people just answer that question by tapping into negative emotions, like anger and fear, by presenting their viewpoint as the solution to a problem that may not even exist. They do this because playing to our base instincts as humans is a powerful tool that drives them to the top by sending other people to the bottom. That's wrong. But separating ourselves is not how we make progress together. It's not how we deal with what's difficult. And it is assuredly not how humanity thrives together. If you really want to make a difference by doing the things that matter, the difficult things that matter, then you have to close, not widen the distance between. I want you to imagine what you learned in one of your courses, I'm sure. That's the standard Venn diagram. So imagine that your worldview is one circle and the other worldview is others', others perspectives, their worldview. The other circle is other people's perspective. Uh, 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 the other circle is other people's worldview. So when you can move each other's worldview close enough for everyone to see the overlap, that's the place where we have the opportunity for consensus. That's the place where we really can make progress. That's the place where we can get the difficult things that need to be dealt with done. Now, it's easy for me to say, but it's difficult to get there. People cling really tightly to their own ideas and they don't move their worldviews very easily. I ask you to rely on your strength of character, vision, and persistent passion. I want you to rely on each other. This was at the very heart of your educational experience at VCU, where collaboration among a lot of different disciplines and demography is really key to how we get things done. So you are better prepared than anybody else to work together with differences to get things done that will benefit us all. So remember, be patient with each other, 
you took the time to develop your vision, give other, other people a chance to catch up to you. I know that you can and that you will do this. You're going to be the ones who finally bring us all together when we sometimes seem so very far apart. It's what you've always done at VCU. It's a university that's made stronger by the ways in which so many of us are different. It's what you'll always do for the rest of your lives. And I have to tell you something. Every one of us is, ex is as excited as we can be as we look forward to the many successes that you will create in your lives. I am so excited about your leadership, and I have to tell you, I'm really excited that you will continue to be Virginia Commonwealth University. From the bottom of all of our hearts, congratulations, and all the very best to you as you go forward in this world. So now I'm really pleased to have this opportunity to introduce someone who has brought people together for his entire life. Bill Howell has served as Virginia's House of Delegates for 30 years, <coughs> including in the last 15 years as Speaker of the House. He has represented parts of Stafford <coughs> County and the city of Fredericksburg. The Republican of a New Deal Democrats, Republican son rather, of, a, of the New Deal Democrats and grandson of a British trade unionist. He's dedicated his long career to listening to everyone's perspectives, reaching across the aisle, and favoring pragmatism over politics to get things done. He's a lifelong Virginian. Speaker Howell has done great work for higher education and for our Commonwealth including, by the way, your alma mater and many of its important parts. VCU is definitely a better university because of Bill and, I want to mention, his wife, Ceci. His wife, Ceci. Ceci, would you just stand for a moment, please? Ceci is an active and beloved member of our VCU Massey Cancer Center Board. Ceci, thank you for joining us this morning, and thank you for your wonderful service to the university. Speaker How yes, please. Speaker Howell is going to retire in January, and he's never lost an election, nor has he, more importantly, ever lost the faith of the people he served. And serve he did, with extraordinary impact and incredible humility. You know, recently he wrote, and I'm going to quote him directly, something that I thought was really important to share with you. I believe that the office of the Speaker rises above partisan politics. This is an institutional role that transcends the fractured moments that often drive our politics. I have always tried to serve in a manner worthy of that stature. I always have tried to be open, accessible, and most of all, fair. And then he went on to say, and I'm going to continue the quote, I reminded myself and others that what kind of people we are and how we treat one another is as important as the bills that we pass and the laws that we make. May we never lose sight of this worthy aspiration." End quote. So I got to tell you, Virginia is going to miss the leadership of Bill Howell. We are delighted that he is with us here today as our commencement speaker. He is a bridge builder, an incredible public servant. He has been a wonderful friend to me. I have always, always appreciated his incredible sincerity and all of the ways in which he has helped me think through some of the most difficult issues that a university president in a capital city can face. He has been wonderful. So please, help me welcome Speaker of the House of Delegates, the Commonwealth of Virginia, Bill Howell. Thank you very much, President Rao. Graduates, ladies and gentlemen, thank you and good morning. First, I want to uh, sincerely thank VCU for the honorary degree, which I understand <laughs> they're going to give to me later. Uh, 
You know, I frequently get a lot of emails from constituents and people around the state calling me a jerk. Uh, so now I can point to my doctorate and say, listen, you've got to call me Dr. Jerk. Uh, <laughs> as we come together this morning, most of you graduates are about to set off on new careers and lives. And I'm of the age, uh, however, where my career is winding down. As President Rao said, I'll give up the gavel as Speaker of the House of Delegates in January, after having served in the House for 30 years, including the last uh, 15 years as Speaker. You know, I didn't want to end up like uh, a 79-year-old chairman of one of the congressional committees in Washington. Uh, he'd been there so long that a committee staff member was quoted uh, in the newspaper as saying, we think he's dead, but we're afraid to ask. <laughs> Over these 30 years in politics, I've learned a few things that I believe also apply to life. And so I thought I might share four of those lessons with you briefly. 30 years ago, I worked in a small bank. I didn't own the bank. I didn't run the bank. I just worked there. But I'd always been interested in politics. Our delegate in the House moved out of the district and couldn't run for re-election. My wife and I talked about me running, we prayed about it. My biggest reservation was a fear of losing. No one likes to lose. But I was able to overcome that fear and run successfully. And those 30 years have been the most interesting and the most fulfilling years of my life, full of wonderful people. If I hadn't taken that risk, my life would have been so much less enjoyable. Right now, or in the years ahead, you too will have to decide about whether to take a risk on your future. Maybe you're being pressured to go to law school when you really want to try acting in New York or running a dive shop in Costa Rica. The late Senator Howard Baker used to tell the story that when he was in the U.S. Senate, Fred Smith, the fellow who founded Fred Federal Express, came to see him one day and told him of his plan that he had for an overnight delivery system. Senator Baker told the 27-year-old man to save his money because it would never work. Fortunately, Fred Smith didn't listen. So lesson number one is follow your instincts, follow your passions. Don't have any regrets. Don't wonder what might have been. Take the risk and go for it. Okay, next lesson. In politics, you meet lots of people. And I've certainly met some characters over the years. When I first arrived in Richmond, the Speaker of the House was from the old days. He was a dictatorial kind of guy. He'd assigned Republicans to committees that didn't meet. He's been dead 25 years, and he still scares me. <laughs> but one of my favorite people that I've gotten to know over the years is Algie Howell, who's now retired from the legislature. Although we're from different backgrounds and different parties, we became good friends. I was honored when Algie asked me if I could speak at his wife's funeral. I learned a lot from Algie. He would tell me stories about civil rights here in Virginia in the old days. He knew and he worked with Martin Luther King. In 1956, Algie attempted to join the Air Force. He took a test in Norfolk, Virginia with a number of other guys, three of whom, including Algie, happened to be black. After everyone finished the test, the recruiter said to the three black guys, you, you, and you didn't pass. Algie thought the test was pretty easy, so he asked, what part didn't I pass? And the recruiter wouldn't tell him. So the next day, Algie boarded a bus to New York City, where his uncle lived. And the morning after, he walked over to the Air Force recruiter's office and took the same test. About 70 people took the test at the same time, and Algie passed. When he asked the recruiter how well he did, the recruiter said, how you made the third highest grade. Algie said, I learned not to give up. He's one of the people who have genuinely touched my life. He's here today. I'd like you to meet him. Algie, would you please stand? Thank you for coming, Algie, all the way from Norfolk. 
I could go on with all the people I met in politics, but the lesson I want to pass on is this. Lesson number two. And I hope I don't sound like I'm stealing this from the movie Mean Girls. <laughs> but sit at the table where you might not normally sit. Get to know a person that you might not normally know. Open yourself to meeting as many people from as many walks of life as possible. And I can guarantee you that your life will be enriched. Lesson number three is about compromise. Compromise is not about abandoning your principles. It's not a fault or a weakness. It's the means of living with someone. And this is true in politics, in business, even in marriage, especially in marriage. In each, you may quarrel and contend, but you must not dismiss. Outwardly, it leads to stalemates and standoffs. Inwardly, to frustration, anger, and retribution. It destroys trust, which is the basis of both democracies and marriages. Contrary to what some say, compromise is not a bad word. In fact, it's a very good principle for us to follow. Okay, final lesson. This is a story told by Paul Thatcher, a friend of former Vice President and United States Senator Hubert Humphrey. When Senator Humphrey was dying of cancer in December of 1977, he began calling people to wish them a Merry Christmas, although he was actually calling to say his goodbyes. On Christmas Eve, he reached Richard Nixon, the man who had defeated him for the presidency and then had to resign because of Watergate. Humphrey found that both of the Nixons were ill, depressed, and alone for the holiday. His conversation with Nixon so troubled Humphrey that he called back the next day and confided that he only had a few days to live. He told the former president that he'd made arrangements to lie in state in the rotunda at the Capitol. And he said he wanted Nixon to attend and stand in the place of honor of a former president. Well, Nixon hadn't returned to Washington since his res resignation because he wasn't welcome there. Humphrey told Nixon that if anyone should question his presence, he should say he was there at the request of Humphrey. Apparently, gasps of surprise could be heard when Nixon walked into the rotunda. But what a wonderful example of grace this was on Hubert Humphrey's part. So le lesson number four is this. You can argue. You can disagree. You can fight till you can't stand up. But when it's over, show grace and you will not be disappointed. Graduates, as you set out on your lives, my hope is that you will embody politics as we would all like it to be, that your convictions will be strong, that your mind will be open, that your reply to victory or defeat will be grace, that your friends will be diverse and many. You have my warmest congratulations, my heartfelt best wishes, and my most genuine hope for a success. Thank you very much. Speaker Howell, thank you so much for those great words of wisdom and from a very wise man. So each year we offer special recognition to people who have enhanced VCU and the quality of life in our communities and around the world. So today we're going to begin with the presentation of the Honorary Doctor of Humane Letters, which is Virginia Commonwealth University's highest recognition. And this year, we are very proud to present this award to our commencement speaker, Bill Howell. Rector Hall, would you please come forward and escort Speaker Howell to the podium and Provost Hackett? Speaker Howe, your longtime devotion and service to the Commonwealth of Virginia and its citizens has been remarkable. Your commitment to strengthening Virginia's economy, education, public safety, and transportation through fiscal responsibility has been critical in moving our state forward, and your advocacy for preservation and conservation 
will protect Virginia's natural resources for future generations. Through your prudent leadership, our state will remain a great place of growth and prosperity for all. President Rao. And Speaker Howell, in recognition of your grand achievements by the authority vested in me by the Board of Visitors of Virginia Commonwealth University, it is my pleasure to confer upon you the degree Doctor of Humane Letters, Honoris Causa, with all of the rights, privileges, and emoluments thereunto pertaining. At this time, we will now present our next award, which is the Edward Wayne Medal. This is a medal that honors individuals who have made outstanding contributions or who have provided exemplary service to Virginia Commonwealth University. And this year, it is my pleasure to tell you that the Wayne Medal will go to Connie and Chip Lacey. Rector Hall, would you please escort the Laceys forward to the podium? Mr. and Mrs. Lacey, your extraordinary generosity as steadfast supporters of VCU's Massey Cancer Center and the VCU School of Medicine has helped propel, propel us forward in our continued pursuit of excellence in caring for those in need. Your selfless contributions to medical research have created an environment of <coughs> exceptional patient care through continued detection and prevention of diseases. Because of this, we are forever moved by your unceasing commitment to others. Your embodiment of the university's core value of service positively affects our region and leaves a lasting legacy. President Rao. Connie and Chip Lacey, in recognition of your great generosity by the authority vested in me by the Board of Visitors of Virginia Commonwealth University, it is my pleasure to present to each of you the Wayne Medal. If you'll just stand over there, I'll be right with you. Thank you, Connie and Chip and Speaker Howell. 
And now we will present all of our candidates for their degrees. And we will begin by having graduate school dean, Doug Boudinot, please come forward at this time, if you will, and present to us our Doctor of Philosophy candidates. Thank you, President Rao. Will the candidates for the degrees of Doctor of Philosophy and Doctor of Education please rise? <coughs> Mr. President, as Dean of the Graduate School, it gives me great pleasure to present these candidates who have fulfilled all of the requirements and are recommended by the VCU graduate faculty. And by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Commonwealth of Virginia, the Board of Visitors, and upon the recommendation of each of your faculties, I am pleased to confer upon each of you the degree Doctor of Philosophy. The candidate's major advisor will join me in hooding the graduates. Uh, the president will be joined by Rector Hall in congratulating our newly uh, graduates. Doctor of Philosophy in Health-Related Sciences, Christy Finney, accompanied by William Corzu. <laughs> Doctor of Philosophy in Health-Related Sciences, Mary Beth Massey, accompanied by Michael Falacaro. Doctor of Philosophy in Health-Related Sciences, Anne-Marie Potter, accompanied by Tony Gentry. <laughs> Doctor of Philosophy in Health-Related Sciences, Lois Stewart, accompanied by Corey Davis. Doctor of Philosophy in Education, Jennifer Gerlach, accompanied by Donna Gibson. Doctor of Philosophy in Education, Stephanie Hudson, accompanied by Catherine Mansfield. Doctor of Philosophy in Education, Kimberly McKnight, accompanied by Sharon Zumbra. <laughs> Doctor of Philosophy in Education, Allison King, accompanied by Colleen Toma. Doctor of Philosophy in Education, Mira Mataji, accompanied by Colleen Toma. Colleen Toma. <laughs> Doctor of Philosophy in Education, Wojciech, accompanied by. Doctor of Philosophy in Education, David Naff, accompanied by Kathleen Cawley. <laughs> Doctor of Philosophy in Education, Kelly Olds, accompanied by Mary Herman.
Doctor of Philosophy in Education, Priya Darshanini Patak, accompanied by Robin Hurst. Doctor of Philosophy in Biomedical Engineering, Michael Lancina, accompanied by Hu Yang. Doctor of Philosophy in Engineering, Mamoun Al Rashid, accompanied by Jayasima Alatusima. Doctor of Philosophy in Engineering, Sara Shilaja Nair, accompanied by Kenneth Wynn. Engineering, M.D. Barkat Ula, accompanied by Umit Ozagur. Doctor of Philosophy Technical and Nuclear Engineering, Dale Farkas, accompanied by Worth Longest. <laughs> Doctor of Philosophy in Chemistry, Lena Jiang, accompanied by Sarah Rutan. Systems Modeling and Analysis, Tony Sorrell, accompanied by Paul Brooks. <laughs> Doctor of Philosophy in Integrative Life Sciences, Niki Jariwala, accompanied by Devanan Sarkar. Doctor of Philosophy in Biochemistry, Edmund Belvin, accompanied by Janina. <laughs> Doctor of Philosophy in Microbiology and Immunology, Catherine Sinclair, accompanied by Janina Lewis. Doctor of Philosophy in Healthcare Policy and Research, Anushri Vikari, accompanied by Peter Cunningham. <laughs> Doctor of Philosophy in Social and Behavioral Sciences, Janine Guidry, accompanied by Kelly Carlisle. Doctor of Philosophy in Epidemiology, Wallenborn, an advisor, accompanied by Saba Macho. <laughs> Doctor of Philosophy in Neuroscience, William Marks, accompanied by Kurt Hauser. Doctor of Philosophy in Pharmacology and Toxicology, Amy Johnson, accompanied by Sydney Negus. <laughs> Doctor of Philosophy in Pharmacology, Wang Bi Li, accompanied by Pin Lan Li. Doctor of Philosophy in Clinical and Translational Sciences, 
Ayesha Chawla, accompanied by Stephen Grossman. Doctor of Philosophy in Clinical and Translational Sciences, Megan Cook, accompanied by Danielle Dick. <laughs> Doctor of Philosophy in Clinical and Translational Sciences, Doctor of Philosophy in Clinical and Translational Sciences, Elizabeth Long, accompanied by Daniel. <laughs> Doctor of Philosophy in Public Policy and Administration, Lindsay LaCree Evans, accompanied by Susan Gooden. Doctor of Philosophy in Public Policy and Administration, Faye Renee Howard, accompanied by Susan Gooden. <laughs> Doctor of Philosophy in Public Policy and Administration, Grant Riss, accompanied by Susan Gooden. Doctor of Philosophy in Pharmaceutical Sciences, Daniel Afosa, accompanied by Paula Kupstis. Ladies and gentlemen, congratulations to all of our PhD graduates. And now I invite Dean Boudinot to come back to the podium so that he can present candidates for their master's degrees and certificates in all disciplines. Dean Boudinot. Thank you, President Rao. Will the master's degree candidates for all majors in the following schools please rise as I call your school. Master's degrees in College of Humanities and Sciences, Allied Health Professions, School of the Arts, School of Business, School of Education, School of Engineering, School of Dentistry, L. Douglas Wilder, School of Government and Public Affairs, School of Medicine, School of Nursing, School of Social Work, VCU Life Sciences. Will the candidates for all baccalaureate graduate certificates please rise? Mr. President, as Dean of the Graduate School, it gives me great pleasure to present these candidates who have fulfilled all of the requirements and are recommended by the graduate faculty of VCU. And by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Commonwealth of Virginia, the Board of Visitors, and upon the recommendation of each of your faculties, it is my pleasure to confer upon each of you your master's degrees and certificates. And now I will ask School of Allied Health Professions Dean Cecil Drain to please come forward so that he may present candidates for the degree Doctor of Nurse Anesthesia Practice. Thank you, President Rao. Will the candidates for the degree Doctor of Nurse Anesthesia Practice please rise. Mr. President, as Dean of the School of Allied Health Professions, it gives me great pleasure to present these students from the number one program in the United States by U.S. News and World Report, who have fulfilled all requirements and are recommended by their world-class faculty. 
and by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Commonwealth of Virginia, the Board of Visitors, upon the recommendation of your faculty, I am pleased to confer upon each one of you the degree Doctor of Nurse Anesthesia Practice. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. And now I'm going to ask VCU Honors College Dean Barry Falk if he would please come forward so that he can acknowledge students who are graduating today with specific Latin and university honors. Dean Falk. Thank you, President Rao. In accordance with university tradition, those bachelor degree holders who have done exceptionally well academically and have completed a minimum of 45 credits at VCU are recognized today with Latin honors. All students with a grade point average between 3.3 and 3.59 on a scale of up to 4.0 are graduating cum laude, which signifies graduation with academic distinction. Will these students please rise? All students with a grade point average between 3.6 and 3.89 are graduating magna cum laude, which signifies graduation with high academic distinction. Will these students please rise? All students with a grade point average of 3.9 or higher are graduating summa cum laude, which signifies graduation with the highest academic distinction. Will these students please rise? Thank you and congratulations to all of you. I would also like to recognize all the bachelor degree candidates who, in addition to earning Latin honors, have completed the requirements of the VCU Honors College and will graduate today with university honors. Would you please stand? <laughs> Congratulations on your exceptional achievement, and thank you. Thank you, Dean Falk. At this time, we will now turn our attention to all of our baccalaureate degree, uh, degrees and certificates, and for that, I'm going to ask College of Humanities and Sciences Dean Monse Fuentes to please come forward to the podium so that she may present our baccalaureate graduates. Thank you, President Rao. Will the, will the candidates for all bachelor's degrees, baccalaureate certificates, and post-baccalaureate undergraduate certificates in the College of Humanities and, and Sciences please rise? Graduates, the view from here is just wonderful. Mr. President, as Dean of Humanities and Sciences, it gives me great pleasure to present these amazing students who have fulfilled all our requirements and are recommended by our superb faculty. And by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Commonwealth of Virginia, the Board of Visitors, upon the recommendation of each of your faculties, I am pleased to confer upon each one of you your baccalaureate degrees and certificates. That's it, you got it. At this time, at this time I will ask 
School of the Arts, Senior Associate Dean John Guthmiller to please come forward to the podium. Thank you, President Rao. Will the candidates for all bachelor's degrees and baccalaureate certificates in the School of the Arts please rise? <laughs> Mr. President, on behalf of Dean Sean Brixey of the School of the Arts, it gives me great pleasure to present these students who have fulfilled all requirements and are recommended by the faculty. And by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Commonwealth of Virginia, the Board of Visitors, upon the recommendation of your faculty, I am very pleased to confer upon each one of you your baccalaureate degree and certificates. Thank you. At this time, I'll now ask School of Business Dean Ed Greer to please come forward to the podium so that he may present additional candidates. Thank you, President Rao. Will the candidates for all bachelor's degrees, baccalaureate certificates, and post-baccalaureate undergrad certificates in the School of Business please rise? Mr. President, as Dean of the School of Business, it gives me great pleasure to present these students who have fulfilled all of the requirements and are recommended by the faculty. And by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Commonwealth of Virginia, the Board of Visitors, upon the recommendation of your business faculty members, I am very pleased to confer upon each one of you your baccalaureate degrees and certificates. And now I will ask Executive Associate Dean of the School of Engineering, John Leonard, to please come forward and present our engineering graduates. Thank you, Mr. President. Will the candidates for all bachelor's degrees, baccalaureate certificates, and post-baccalaureate undergraduate certificates in the School of Engineering please rise? Mr. President, on behalf of Dean Barbara Boyan, it gives me great pleasure to present the students who have fulfilled all requirements and are recommended by the faculty. And by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Commonwealth of Virginia, the Board of Visitors, upon the recommendation of your engineering faculty members, I am pleased to confer upon the two of you <laughs> each of your baccalaureate degrees and certificates. <laughs> And now I will ask L. Douglas Wilder, School of Government and Public Affairs Dean John Accardino to please come forward so that he may present his candidates. Thank you, President Rao. Will the candidates for all bachelor's degrees in the L. Douglas Wilder School of Government and Public Affairs please rise. <laughs> Mr. President, as Dean of the L. Douglas Wilder School of Government and Public Affairs, it gives me great pleasure to present these students who have fulfilled all requirements and are recommended by the faculty. And by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Commonwealth of Virginia, the Board of Visitors, with the recommendation of your faculty, I am pleased to confer upon each one of you your baccalaureate degrees. And now, if School of Nursing Dean Gene Giddens will please come forward to the podium. Thank you, Mr. President. Will all candidates for all bachelor's degrees in the School of Nursing please rise? Mr. President, as Dean of the School of Nursing, it gives me great pleasure to present these students who have fulfilled 
all requirements and are recommended by our faculty. And by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Commonwealth of Virginia, the Board of Visitors, upon the recommendation of the nursing faculty, I am pleased to confer upon each one of you your nursing degrees. And now I'm going to ask School of Social Work Interim Dean Tim Davey to please come forward to the podium to present his candidates. Thank you, Mr. President. Will the candidate for the degree of Bachelor of Social Work please rise? Mr. President, as Interim Dean of the School of Social Work, it gives me great pleasure to present John Johnson, who has fulfilled all requirements and been recommended by the faculty. And by, and by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Commonwealth of Virginia, the Board of Visitors, upon the recommendation of your faculty, I am pleased to confer upon you your baccalaureate degree. And now I'll ask University College Interim Dean Shelley Fowler to please come forward to the podium to present her candidates for the Bachelor of Interdisciplinary Studies degree. Thank you, President Rao. Will the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Interdisciplinary Studies in University College please rise? President Rao, as Interim Dean of University College, it gives me tremendous pleasure to present these students who have fulfilled all requirements and are recommended by the faculty. And by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Commonwealth of Virginia, the Board of Visitors, and upon the recommendation of your faculty, I am pleased to confer upon each one of you the degree Bachelor of Interdisciplinary Studies. Thank you. And now at this time, I'm going to ask Vice Provost for Life Sciences, Rob Tomes, to please come forward to the podium. <laughs> Thank you, President Rao. Will the candidates for all bachelor's degrees in life sciences please rise? <laughs> Mr. President, as Vice Provost for Life Sciences, it gives me great pleasure to present these students who have fulfilled all requirements and are recommended by the faculty. And by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Commonwealth of Virginia, the Board of Visitors, with the recommendation of your faculty, I am pleased to confer upon each of you your baccalaureate degrees. And I thank you. So now it's my pleasure to officially welcome you as VCU's newest alumni, and I want you to have fun practicing this great tradition at commencement exercise for new graduates, which is to move your tassels from the right side of your mortarboard to the left now that you've graduated. Please do that now. Congratulations to VCU's class of 2017! Before we end this ceremony today, before we end this ceremony today, there are some people, very important people, who have supported our graduates through the years and have made this day so meaningful that we have to acknowledge. Would the parents of our graduates please rise and be recognized? And would the
the spouses, partners, and significant others of our graduates please rise and be recognized. Would the children of our graduates please rise and be recognized. And would all the other friends and relatives who supported our graduates please rise and be recognized. Thank you, one and all. So this now brings our commencement ceremony to a close. Graduates, graduates, we ask that you kindly allow the platform party to exit. Our marshals will then lead you in a recessional. On behalf of President Rao and the VCU Board of Visitors, we wish you all the very best. Thank you, and again, congratulations. Thank <laughs> you.